this is Sabina at Cross Keys Crafts. It wasn't until a few days ago when I finally tidied away my Christmas crafts that I came across the packaging that I had shown you in my packaging haul and I realised that I owe you a few videos and a few cards with these materials. So I already had a go at the first lot of packaging which was this biscuit box that already had sentiments on both sides. So you can have a look at the video, the packaging haul video. I'm going to link to that below if you want to see what this box looked like before. And I have cut it apart with my craft knife. You can also use your scissors. So ideally what you do with when you have a box like that, you just cut it so you have got it flat. Don't worry about the um, flaps still being attached. I'll show you in a second how to take that apart. But for this card here, I have basically cut the panels. This one was attached here and it had the writing and the of the contents here in the middle. So I cut, just cut this apart as I, uh, as much as I could without having any packaging or score lines from the uh, edges here. And then I have layered this one because it already had the cutout of the star with a little bag with some glitter and some sequins. I didn't have that many sequins. These actually came from, just show you, from a mixed bag. You get these at Card Factory. These have got numbers in them, so I fished a few gold ones out. So I would actually have had more, but I was too lazy to fish them out. But I had a bit of glitter. My very first video on this channel shows you how to make this sort of shaker card. All it is, it's a clear bag here. I just use the clear bags you get to put your cards in once they're finished and I cut them to size. I always try to use one of the corners so you've got two sides already sealed and then you just seal one side, put in the um, sequence or glitter and then seal the top. Um, make sure though it is properly sealed. I gave mine a shake and the stuff actually came, the glitter came out of the corner here so I had to put another bit of cello tape on it but it should be fine now. You can also use red tape to seal this. So anyway, so I've done this. Uh, I just wanted to show you what the back looks like. It looks a bit of a mess, but it doesn't matter. Um, from the front, it'll look okay. And you need to make sure when you attach this that you give it a bit of space to move around. So it has got some bark in it, but it doesn't matter because we're going to put some foam tape on that in a second. Then my question was, when I had cut these pieces, how do I met these? What do I put them on? I thought about putting some black in the back, but I didn't really want to introduce another colour. So I had a look in my stash and I found this purple. It's not an exact match, but that doesn't matter. I think that works really quite nicely with the purpley blue of the packaging. But when I put down the sentiment, when I cut this apart, so it will actually fit on there. I'll show you in a second what else we do with it. I thought this looks a bit bland, so I decided, I just left this so you can see what it looks like, I decided to mat this with some gold um, card stock and I cut, cut these down and that will just pop very nicely on the background. So my tip is once you've got card stock, find some matching card stock, don't introduce too many new colours, I could have chosen a gold as well, but then um, see how you how, how the colours pop or what you want to stand out, what you want to basically integrate into the card, if that makes sense. So the other thing I prom just promised you, I've got this piece left, so I will make another card, but I wanted to show you how to take off the flaps here. You can use your heat gun to heat up the glue. Most of the time I find you don't really need it. But the trick is not to pull it up like this because then you're going to bend the piece of cardstock you want. You want to turn this round and then pull this bit up. And don't worry if it gets a bit damaged on the back as long as you don't tear it all through the layers. So you can see this one will be totally ruined and actually you have to start again on the other side because it doesn't come off completely. That you don't even have to take the whole thing off. The important thing is that you don't have too much bulk to it and don't have any extra layers. So that will be fine for me. I'm just testing that there's no residue. And then this piece is still perfect for me to use. So that's a little trick for you. 
So I'm going to cut uh, the mats for this now. I'm going to cut this down and I'm going to show you in a second what the foam tape looks like once I have attached it. I'll spare you the footage to that and I'll come back with this. Okay, so this is what the back of my panel looks like. I have put tape all the way, uh, all the way around. And if you haven't seen me do this before, I always keep some release paper from some vinyl, for example. And I put my, put my sticky strips from the rolls on that and then it's so much easier to cut. That allows me to cut them to size here lengthways very easily. And the other thing I did, I got near the end of my roll and obviously when you do that you've got just some cardboard underneath or some paper and they won't stick anymore. I'm not too bothered about that. I can still use that. I just used my Cosmic Shimmer glue and I just glued these pieces down. This is the first one I had originally cut off and I put this one down because different foam tapes have got different heights. And I didn't want to mix this brand with another one that might have a different thickness. So just to make sure I've got the same thickness all the way through, I just utilised this strip here. And I can still utilise the rest for a little project. So that's one little tip. And then I want to show you what I did with these. So I cut these down on my guillotine. If you've got bits a bit like here from your guillotine, which is due to the packaging, where it's a bit uneven, just use a nail file and just go along like this and you will find it's much smoother. You also can if you want to just use an alcohol marker and use the tip and just go along the back and you will get rid of this white line here but I'm not too bothered because I'm matting it on gold and then it won't be that obvious. So I have marked on the ends here that have got a bit of a gap in the middle here and I've just gone half an inch into onto this side and I've marked this because I want to cut a little um, triangle here. So just with your scissors, just like this, because it'll look more interesting than just having it square. And I'm doing the same here. So, and I have cut these strips, they're much longer than I actually need them, but, <coughs> pardon me, I'm just going to glue these down now, and then with my scissors, I'm going to cut an even border, similar to the one here, onto the um, arrow bit here, and that's what I'm going to do now, off camera, and then I'll show you what it looks all like, look, sorry, what it all looks like glued down. Okay, my first card is finished. So I have matted these uh, sentiments here on the gold cardstock and I think this is really nice. And the shaker window moves the sequins and the glitter move very freely. And yeah, I'm really pleased in how this turned out. I have already prepared this second card. Oh, you can see me there. Um, but I wanted to show you this before I glue the bits down because I'm going to... Well, my thought was, because this picture is much smaller, I wanted a focus, another focus on the card. So I decided to use this um, metallic cardstock that's got the uh, star embossing on it. And I bought this, I think, either from Home Bargains or from B&M in the Kiddies Craft section. But when I first got it, I thought the, the front here is really uneven and I was really unhappy with it until I found out... This has actually got a film on the top and you can very easily peel this off and then you've got a much neater finish. You need to peel this off otherwise your embellishments come off again. And now you've got this plain cardstock here. And now I can glue these down. Because this is so much smaller I decided for a different layout. So I want to have this one across here and this one I think coming up on this side. And then just having this here. So I'll have a think. I might actually do something different with the edges here. I'll have a little think about this. And I'm coming back with it in a second. So here's my second finished card. I decided to cover the edges here with some cut out stars. I just cut from glitter cardstock. Um, 
I made sure I covered the lines complete. I didn't want to show any corners here. And yeah, I'm quite pleased with this. If I would do this card again, I would glue these down first and then probably move this up just a wee bit because it is, uh, is a lot of free space here now. But yeah, that's in hindsight. But still, I'm quite pleased in how these turned out. So yeah, two cards are made from one box that came with some biscuits. Yeah, and I think these are really nice and I can use them this year. It's only 11 months till Christmas. So yeah, fair enough. And I see you soon with just one more video where I show you how I use this packaging and then I think everything else will have to go into recycling and I won't use them this year for Christmas cards. So I'll see you again soon.